let's do it. Hi, I'm Tom, I talk about code. Today, we are going to be making all kinds of enhancements to our 2D renderer because, very excitingly, uh, yesterday, or two days ago, everything worked, okay? So I can actually show off right now uh, things actually running. I I'll only show an emulator, I'm not going to do another uh, showcase of things actually running on hardware. Sorry about the uh, short BRB screen coming up there. So let let's do it. Let me just jump back. Uh, let's go into the dungeon crawl. I, I've got a lot of stuff to talk about, okay? So if I go make run, this is a fast renderer. So before, this was getting fairly uh, terrible FPS, but the real problem came in when we tried to draw lots of things at once. So if we go into uh, uh, script main, if we go into where we initialize this tile map, and this is a very dumb tile map initialization, but if we just initialize a bunch of tiles, right? Uh, let's go 20 by 20. Let's go a lot of tiles. And we run this. Um, before this was giving us like 1 FPS, now we're smooth at 30. I, I wonder how many tiles we could actually draw before we hit a limit. That would be fun to test out. But uh, yeah, this is good. So this means I fixed a few bugs off camera. They weren't very interesting bugs. Uh, they were mostly about masking being applied incorrectly. But yeah, so this is the dungeon game that was my uh, really crappy Lisp Game Jam entry. Runs on a real PlayStation 2. This example is just in an emulator for now, but uh, we now have collisions and we have a better system for drawing tile maps. Unfortunately, my tiles are still just really, really ugly. So that's exciting. Uh, we have good textures. I've also updated the uh, <laughs> the wrapper, I guess, for this code to use the new VRAM uh, APIs and stuff. I merged a couple of things into master yesterday. So I'm getting a nice little list of, of done tasks here. Uh, this one is actually not done. I probably need to put that back into to-do. Let's put it there. It's not a high priority, but let's have a quick rundown of the board. Let's look at what I've done. Let's look at what's on the table. Uh, so the 2D renderer is coming along nicely. I think that goes without saying, right? It actually works for an example game now, which is cool. Um, this example is a little bit weird. I suspect this would actually be fixed with the 2D renderer now, but maybe not. I'll have to test it out and see. That's not what we're going to do today, but this is here so that I actually get around to it. Uh, the first thing we were going to pick up is this load more texture sizes issue, right? Uh, I wrote out a nice list of goals because I want to test out, eventually, the main thing I want to do this stream uh, is the pixel perfect sprites task that is over here. We're going to drag this into in progress uh, because we're going to start it today, okay? But this load more texture sizes is kind of funny because I found this uh, t pixel art online, right? This is from Reddit, you Corabel. Uh, I cropped a 256 by 256 region out of it, and I tried to load it, and it didn't work. And I went, wow, uh, what a shame, you know. It would be great if I could get this working. Turns out, uh, and so I wrote an issue about it, and I, you know, decided it was something that we could try and fix this stream. Turns out, I'm just kind of an idiot. Um, let's get a big terminal up. And so I can run this, and we draw it. Beautiful. And I'm printing a lot of stuff. So another thing that I actually did off camera, if we go into a texture example, I can actually set a log level from Lua. So I can set log level zero um, and none of that crap will get logged. We have some TLB misses, which is scary. That shouldn't happen. Um, that shouldn't happen. That would probably crash. Well, that would certainly crash a real uh, console. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, so maybe this texture stuff does have some stuff to look into. Did that just get hidden? It did. Those TLB misses were still happening. Okay. So just as well, I made an issue for this, because there is something to look into here. Oh boy, there is something to look into here. When we're doing a DMA tag, we're trying to load from this weird address. When we're flipping the screen, we're trying to store at this weird address. I don't know what this would be. So we need to work this out. We need to work this out. This is bad. Um... But yeah, our logging system is now more flexible than ever, which is cool. And we can control it from Lua, which is really important. So for example, when I was testing out the 2D game stuff, I was able to start up the game and then only turn trace logging on at the problematic points that weren't working and then use that to really quickly hone in on what had gone wrong and fix it. Which is good, which is good. Um, I am just going to quickly inspect my stream. It looks like everything looks good. Feels like everything's working. Feels like everything's working. Isn't this cool? Isn't this cool? I think YouTube will actually class this as high definition video now. Amazing. Um, also, just as a quick, I guess, uh, meta update, if you look down below, either in the YouTube description or in the Twitch panels or in this view of my face, I've set up a Ko-Fi, a coffee link. 
uh, for people to donate to me. I'm now going to be doing that rather than uh, stream elements because of recent things. I'm also I can see a little bit of flickering in my webcam, and I noticed this in uh, a few of my I noticed this in a few of my videos as well. Sorry, I keep hitting that BRB scene by mistake. I'm gonna live try and fix this. Okay, we go. So this might make it worse, and then this might make it better. How are we looking? How are we looking? Do we have banding? I think that fixed the banding. Cool. It's every time I open OBS, I have to go in and manually change the power line frequency setting in my webcam. If I don't do that... Whoa, my audio was probably not very... Okay, hold on. Hold on. There's a lot of stuff going on right now, okay? It has been a really productive two days. So... Let's go into our to-do list here. Okay, this is kind of crossed off already because we do it and it works, but let's go, uh, let's call it 1B, okay? T-L-B miss. We really have to crack what is causing this. Um, that's very important. That's gonna, that's gonna block us on hardware. So, let's come into our texture loading. What happens what happens if we set a different texture size to the one we're actually loading? This does work, and it's just weird. But, uh, if I get rid of this garbage log level... We get the TLB miss still. Hmm. And the first TLB miss comes right as we load the image data. And we have this... This seems to be the most common TLB miss error we see, right? Uh, storing at 0xc, right? Uh, DK Cass. Welcome, thank you. Uh, forgive me the old clear. Cack hoofed. Good morning slash evening to you as well. It is still morning here. It's a lovely overcast day in Melbourne. Um, yeah, oh, miserable day. Great day to be sitting inside and doing some coding. So if I keep reducing the size of this, right? If I go down to 64 by 64 and run, we still get a TLB miss. Okay, there's something about this image, right? It has to be something about this image, the way this image is being loaded. What could be... I really want to know what happens at 0xc. Uh, what, what is a TLB miss? Very good question. Very good question. So, when you do stuff in memory... Uh, that's a good... Let me refer to Google. Okay. Because it's been a little while since I did my um, computer architecture course. Okay, so translation look aside buffer. Uh, is there a good picture of it? It... But it, it it basically, in, in the context of this emulator, not to get too bogged down in details, it means we're reading a memory address that doesn't exist, and so there is a, a point, and that point just so happens in uh, PS2 emulator world to get caught at the TLB, which is just like a component of uh, virtual memory systems, I guess. Not virtual memory, but like memory systems that are bigger than the actual physical RAM underneath them, or that allow mapping addresses into different parts of RAM. Um, I wonder if there's actually stuff about that in the PS2 docs. That's an interesting one to look at. We are going to have to get the docs out today to do some of this, uh, especially if we get up to a stretch goal, but I'll talk about that when I get to it, because again, there's a lot of detail there. Um, but yeah, so we're going to try and crack what this TLB misses, then we're going to move on and do pixel perfect sprites, hopefully, and then we're going to improve our texture loading a bit. And we might end up doing 3 and, and 1B. These might be related uh, more closely than I think. But what's weird is, right, we get a TLB miss here with this texture. And if I swap this back to, I think it's called Big Tex. No, it's called uh, Test Tex. Or is it called Test? What it, What's my asset called? Um, it's called Test.TGA. We don't get a TLB miss. So that's odd, right? Uh, that's weird. We would expect, if we're loading two textures, that they would behave the same. So what's different about these textures? TLB miss. It must be that we're um, using a size that isn't the actual size of the image, right? So if we go back to TGA.C. Haven't had to look into this file for a while. Um, for one thing... For one thing, it would be good to not have to uh, pass in a width and a height to this to like create our buffer. But I guess that's kind of a, a problem for another day. Uh, what does TMP buffer do? TMP buffer... 
See, th this, this strikes me as a bit weird. Why did I do this? Ah, yes. We load images into a temp buffer. So our biggest possible text texture size is 256 by 256. That's interesting. Um, what's also interesting is we're doing this loop. So we, we load the TGA data into a temporary buffer and then we swap the bits into a format that the PS2 understands. But I think we can actually do this in place, right? Um, the header dot width plus i times four plus yeah surely right surely surely we can do this swap in place right we don't actually need a temp buffer so I guess that goes under the flexible text loading no tmp We can do this in place, that's fine. But that shouldn't be the cause of our TLB mess. It could be, but it shouldn't be. Um, ID data. Do I actually use ID data? ID one. We don't. We just, we read this in, and then I think we throw it, aw uh, throw it away. Oh, well. Yeah. Although I guess we have to F read it because we have to, like, advance through the file. Um... Reading image data debytes. So if I run, two six two one four four. Ah, that's two six two one four four. Okay, hold on. Let's get let's get Python up. Let's get let's get Python up. Um, let's paste this number in. Let's divide it by two five six. We get 1024. Hmm. Okay. So in other words, we have too many bits for this buffer, right? 256 times 256 times 4. Oh, times 4. Times 4. I missed a times 4. That... Yeah, because we have 4 bits... Uh, 4 bytes per pixel. That's good. That's good. So... We're loading the correct number of... We detect the correct number of bytes in this pixel. That should be the biggest thing that we can handle. Is this an off by one issue? Uh, are you not... So let me pop chat out so I can uh, talk to this as well. Uh, am I not going over the size of the image rather than the size I pass in, resulting in out-of-bounds, hence miss? Going over the size of the image, yes. So this function just goes, it just deals with the size of the image. It doesn't care about what I've passed in. Yes, that's a good point. Because... This, yeah, okay. We don't tell it the size of our buffer. So this function only works if we load uh, our texture with the exact same size as the buffer that we pass in. But that's kind of how I, it should work anyway. I don't, I, I don't want a world where we ever load a partial texture. So I am okay with that as a precondition. I just need to be very explicit about it and then have a better Lua interface that never lets me do that. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh... absolutely right. That still doesn't explain though. So yeah, that explains this case. That doesn't explain this case. This should still work. Um, but this still somehow ends up with a TLB miss. But a different place, right? So this actually reads the image data and then it calls on start and then we get the TLB misses. So yeah, absolutely correct. Thank you so much. That was a really good point. A really good point. Um... Okay. So it's coming in. So at a at a guess, this is maybe like this address roughly is where we've loaded the texture to. No, but the E address of the texture is here. So what is this? What is this? The VRAM address. What's what's the VRAM address in hex? Um one one. 
That's a weird... That's a weirdly similar number. That's a weird quirk. Okay. Um, okay, so where does this come from? <laughs> where does this come from? So, when we call upload texture, okay. First off, let's put a... Um, Let's put another log at the end of upload texture so we can see that it's actually happening there. Add uh, drawtg.c, upload texture. And this is going to be a little bit of um, log-based debugging. I think it's easier than, than stepping through the PCSX2 debugger. Uh, slash up. Use a bit of HTML convention in there. I need to start docker... Beautiful. I'm so nervous typing in my sudo password every time on stream. So nervous. And uh, people in people in chat, do give me a shout out if my bitrate is not okay. It looks like it's doing fine, but I have raised my video quality a little. So, uh, and I do have you know potato Australian internet. So do let me know. Do let me know. Uh, okay, now let's run this again, and we should see. Uh, I put that as a trace log, not as an info log. And it happens after the texture upload. Okay, well that's good. Ah, uh, that's very good. That saved us <laughs> wasting time there. Okay, so do I have to step through this in a debugger? What? Th this has to be coming from Lua, right? Maybe? What ha what's the first thing we do after we upload the texture here? Um, the texture, upload texture. We upload another texture? So does this happen on both uploads? No. Oh, well, it, it happens after the uploads. We load the stuff. But this is definitely a different TLB mess, right? Th this looks very different to the previous one. Uh, Kakuft, how similar are, asks, how similar are PS2 cluts to PS1? I, you wrote your own Tim tool for PS1 a few years back. Um, you remember some of that. So, uh, just as a quick note, this, the CLUT, the CLUT, the CLUT, I believe it stands for Color Lookup Table or something similar. It allows you to use uh, textures that have palettes. I don't know how similar it is to PS1. I imagine reasonably similar because the PS2 was built uh, with PS1 compatibility in mind to a degree. Like, the, the GS does definitely have PS1 compatible modes. Um, but there aren't very many of them, and I don't think any of the clot ones explicitly say it, so I would assume reasonably compatible unless otherwise specified. Okay. So, upload textures. And this only happens when we actually upload the textures as well. Okay. And immediately after. So let's, let's just do a dumb print here and say foo, and see where that comes out, if that's before or after... Okay, these happen a few frames in a row and then stop. That's also very concerning. Very weird. Uh, Lefsler, first time chatter. Welcome. Nice to see me coding. It's good to be coding. I'm glad to be back at my computer after a bit of time away over Christmas. Um, and there's some really exciting stuff happening here. I just need to work out. Okay, what we can do here. Uh, what we can do here. I think we can actually put a break point. Okay, so if I break. I believe... I can come in, I can look at, well, I mean, first off, we can find this address, right? Can I jump to, I don't think I can, 103, 103, that's a lot of scrolling, uh, 103, okay, I can't, 105, let's just scroll, let's just scroll, that's fine, it's not, it's only what, um, a couple of thousand lines, we can do this. What function is this happening in? It's a Lua function, almost certainly, right? Are we in Lua land here? Oh, we're in draw 2D. Okay, 104. Here we go. 104. We're getting close. 103. 103. 103. One. So, of course, it's the bottom of 103. 103. 103. Uh, and this is all my code. So, this is promising, right? If If this is... Oh, no. Hold on. Here we go. This is, uh, this is still my code, this is still my code, 101, uh, 103, 160, 103, 1, we went too far, 1, no we didn't, 1, 8, 1, 4, 103, 1, 
0.6 C. This reminds you of debugging an emulator. Oof. Yeah, that, that sounds really rough. And like, I guess debugging an emulator, you have to write your own tool that does this, right? Um, 10316C. 10316C. That's... This is... Um, hmm. Why pad lure button held? Okay, so we've got this weird lure TLB mess again. We've we've been here before. We've been here before. Um, one six eight. S O A naught zero. Why the? How is an OR instruction? We're ORing two registers. How is this causing a TLB miss? How is this? This isn't storing anything. One o o o one o three one six eight. This has to be wrong. This this has to be wrong. This has to be the wrong PC. Th this can't be the right program counter. This cannot. Also, this oh no, this does get called that many times per frame. But okay, so what this is saying, what this is saying, right? If we come in and we get rid of this check, this is saying that we will remove our TLB miss, and that's just not the case. Um, because now pad held won't get called, right? We've removed it. It's gone. But we still have a TLB. So if I come into the debugger, okay, we're gonna we're gonna break it. Um, hold on, let me actually put my background on as well because that gets rid of a few of the artifacts. Um, okay. Oh no, it 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 put us up here again. Um, okay, but we should be able to find the function, right? I what was it called? Pad pad button held. Pad lure. Pad button held. 10316 103 61 61 I can't read <laughs> 103618 <laughs> This is a problem for me okay this is a problem reading comprehension pad lua in it 1036 nope 103618 pad frame start there we go we've seen this before we've seen this before this looks better, okay? 103618, store. This isn't 103618, 103618. They're all at 103618. All of them, 100% of them. So let's go to pad frame start. Pad dot, pad lua dot c? What's the function called? I already forgot. Uh, pad, pad frame Okay, button held. Button held is problematic. Where do we define button held? See, this is something we've mallocked. But also, why is a load word instruction causing causing a TLB miss with a store? That doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right. Something something stinks here. Something really stinks here. Um. Let's just completely, let's clean rebuild. No. Um, can I print the IDX and see if we're uh, out of bounds? The IDX, what, what's the IDX? Is that a, is that like a register thing or are we, um... Well, first off, what is this address, right? And why does this address keep getting five, six? So we can go to pad pad frame start, right? So button max. Hold on. I'm starting to see some things connecting here, okay? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Are uh, the index of the button I'm clearing? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 exactly, right? So 13 uh, calls here. Let's also just log the address of button held when we allocate it. Um, and if you're thinking, why don't I just use a static, uh, like a statically allocated array here? I was, and it was a problem, okay? Uh, and but for this exact reason. So I don't know why this is giving me so much strife, but uh, yeah, there we go. So let's do a trace log. Let's go trace. 
Uh, let's say... Uh, buffer equals P. And we have btn held. So uh, percent %p is the format specifier for a pointer. This will point the memory address out nicely. And then pad read space. Uh, and this is why it's good. So if I do this now, it's not going to log because we don't have our log level set that low. Um, some kind of placement new. I don't, I don't think I can be off by one because it's happening 13 times. Um, Imagine having some kind of placement new. What do you mean by pla- Again, this this feels like a, either a nerdy C concept I don't know or a C++ thing. Placement new. I ha I just haven't heard that term before. Uh, Daniel San- Daniel- Yeah, Daniel Santos. Thank you very much for the follow. Uh, welcome to the show. Welcome to the stream. Glad to see you hanging around. Um, Daniel Santos, for people who don't know, is another PS2 developer. He's doing similar stuff with Lua. Um, I think we have quite different goals, but we're covering a lot of the same ground. So I'm hoping that we can uh, collaborate and help each other out a bit. Should be good. Uh, let's go into our texture example. Let's go up to our log level. Let's crank this up. Um, these are all magic numbers at the moment. I'm going to define them as constants, but 15 is, is the maximum log level, basically. Cool, now I want to get rid of this as quickly as possible. Um, oh, we basically have our own memory. Yeah, that that's kind of what I'm going to have to move towards eventually. The pad stuff is so small and only done once that I think it shouldn't really matter long term. But um, yeah, I, I am going to manage my own memory. I, I, it's weird, right? Because malloc, like the PS2 is an embedded system, right? Malloc doesn't really do much at all. Um I can just pick. So if I say, right, and I've given this example a few times, in my C code, I can say uh, int p equals 0, x 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. As long as this is a valid address, I can, you know, p equals 17. I can store anything there, right? There's no operating system to tell me, no, that's not okay. Um, there is, you know, again, like uh, address range stuff going on. I think you can actually set that up. There's some stuff in the hardware manual about it that I haven't read because it doesn't really matter to me. But um, yeah, like I'm using these functions for convenience, but in the long run, absolutely unnecessary. All right. Um, so yeah, so like while in some games and stuff, you might do that. For me, uh, it would be silly because that's just what the PlayStation 2 is. Okay, now we've got a bunch more stuff logged. So, if we, if we, uh, I'm going to frame end, pad, it's right at the start, we should have a trace log, where does that get called? Uh, in it, in it, PS2 prog start, frame start, where does this get called? Okay, well, we're loading the, um... Ah, oh, we're loading the, the pad stuff here. Did I rebuild? Did I not rebuild? Um... Hmm. Oh, because the log level isn't actually set until the, the program starts. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I want to go in... This is a dumb hack, but let's just... For now, we'll do this. Um, this should be a build flag, ultimately, but there you go. Cool. Yeah, now we've got all the trace stuff when we want it. Now we've got all the trace stuff when we want it. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Uh, Beast Hunter main. Can I give a quick recap of what I'm doing right now? Absolutely. We are in memory error hell right now. Um, something is going wrong. So we have a function that we call every frame to uh, set up a controller input management, and it's generating this memory error. PCSX2 is fine with it, uh, our PlayStation 2 emulator. It'll happily carry on. Real hardware will just hard crash the minute one of these occurs, so we need to fix it. Now, what's really interesting here, okay, I'm printing out all the memory that that function uses, and we've got this, like, th these are in a very different part of memory, to where this error is occurring. 
So, that's not good. That's really not good. Pad Lua, um, frame start, right? Because this is telling me that I must be getting very, very big. So button max, right? If I'm ranging from 0 to 13, we should never be like a hex 2 o o o o o. Is that too many O's? No, it's 2 o o o o o o o out of range, right? Like somehow we've just gone way bigger than uh, than we should have. Which really just makes no sense to me. Really makes no sense. Um, I might have to do some step through in a debugger. So let's go. And But also, also, right? Not only does this happen, it only happens the first two frames and then it's fine. Uh, can I print button held address when I set it to zero? Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea, would it? Is somehow... Well, because here's the other thing I suspect could be happening. I think Lua might... That Lua's memory might overflow into our memory sometimes. And I don't exactly know how. So I might have to dig into the actual Lua PlayStation 2 source at some point. Um, Daniel Santos, if you're still around, I don't know if you've experienced it. Uh, can I publish a compiled elf? Uh, there is an elf. I posted one in my Discord. Um, once I tag these things... So once this is all cleaned up a little bit more and, and tagged and hopefully documented... Um, there will be a release on GitHub as from a GitHub action um, that will do all the 2D stuff. But if you want it, join my Discord and there is a nice little zip. Cool. So yeah, let's uh, let's go trace pad frame start held equals. <laughs> let's just let's do some more print debugging. I hate it, but we've got to do it. Okay. So, pad frame start held it. Okay, this is different. This has changed, right? We initialize it up here, up here, up here. Held is 1B5700. Down here, it's 4953495. Okay. Okay, okay. So, here's another thought, okay? Here's another interesting thought. Um, what if, what if... When we, in, when we print up here, okay, because the PCSX2 debugger does have this other cool feature, right? So if we go into the debugger uh, and we look at memory, I believe, I believe, if I just make this a bit bigger, uh, can I, we can follow the address? We can, there's a way to do a memory breakpoint, right? So what if I break? Right? I believe... If I go, um, I think there's a way to do a memory breakpoint. There is. There is. Uh, go to address. What if I go to? Okay. Well, either way. Either way. Right. What I want to do, uh, when I when I print this stuff out. I'm also going to print out the address of button held. And my goal will be to see when this thing gets overridden, when it gets mangled, right? If I can catch it when it gets mangled, uh, it's going to be a good time. Uh, cool. Uh, what happened about Lua stuff? Oh, you can't see my Discord? Um, my Discord, it should be linked. Let me, let me drop a quick link to my Discord in chat while I process this information in my head a little bit more, okay? Um, Maybe I'll draw a picture. That might be a good idea. So let's go copy. Um, is this... Yeah, this. I think this is 5.4. I think. Um, what do I actually... It's, no, it's whatever comes in the Docker image, right? I'm not actually including my own Lua, I don't think. I think I still have... Yeah, I think I still have... Um, some a few artifacts from that, but this is just whatever comes in the uh, PS2 dev Docker image. Okay, so. Uh, but now if I build this and run, we're going to see not only the place that this points to, we're going to see... We're going to see... 
the actual address. So this is the address that we really care about. This is the address that we have to watch. So we break. Um, we want to go to address. Hmm. Now that seems weird, right? So true. Okay. Okay. This, I don't know what this is, right? But these are some weird strings. I don't know if this is Lua memory. True vision. So true vision is TGA, right? But I don't think the TGA header is this long, is it? But this is weird. Why is, why has this overridden my memory? So something is overriding my memory. That's good. That's good, right? That's very, very good. Well, it's bad. It's very, very bad, but at least we can work with it. At least it's something we know, we know we can do something with it. Um, where did I put chat? Chat's gone. I've lost chat. Bloody, bloody tiling window managers. <laughs> um, where did I put them? Where did I put them? Where did I put chat? There it is. <laughs> okay, it's okay. I found you guys. I found you guys. Um, this looks really weird. What is putting this in memory? Follow address. Can I... Okay, I don't know what that means. I really, uh, is it i3 or awesome wm? Neither. It is, ah, here I can, okay. Uh, this is a DWM, slightly customized, does some of my own stuff. It's very, very good. Okay, so if I come in here, I can do this. So if, so I can set a memory breakpoint, right? So if I come down, I find my pad init function. Uh, went too far. Pad, pad. Please be in here, pad lua init. Is that it? Pad lua init. I can't exit. I've got to get a second window up. Um, but yeah, no, I, I use a couple of special keyboard shortcuts and stuff to arrange windows so that my face is there. Uh, DGen Kens, thank you very much for following. Okay, so workspace uh, 3D test. We're going to go to pad lua dot Yes. Pad, pad lure in it. Yes. Okay. And we want to put a breakpoint. No. No, we want uh, pad. Is it pad in it? Yeah, it's just called pad in it. Okay. There it is. There we go. There we go. So memoline, memoline. That's okay. Uh, let's go to where we print F. Where's that? I think it's after the SIF load module, right? Where do we call print F? Okay. So now if we restart, now if we restart, or if we just rerun the elf, right? We hit a breakpoint. We can step over. We, c we can... Can we step over? We can't. Okay, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Breakpoint. Breakpoint? Why, why did that not do anything? Uh, let me just set a few. Let me just set a minefield of breakpoints, okay? One of these has got to work. Um, or not. Nah, just, just go past them. That's fine. <laughs> um, nah, all good. You know, breakpoints are more of a suggestion, right? When we execute this, it gets executed, right? I know this gets executed because I can see the log. Uh, well, I can't because it, it scrolled too far, but... In theory, I can see the log. Okay, run elf, run test.elf. We come in here. And uh, where is my, where is my trace? Trace. We can see it. It gets printed. Why don't you break? This was such a good idea. This was such a good idea. Can I break at the start of the function? Will that work? What if I like hard shut down first? I, does that erase my breakpoints? Oh, okay, we broke, we broke. So now I can step over. Step over, step over, blah, 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 blah. Maybe it needs to be on a, on an actual function. Um, okay, I think that did it. Maybe. It's hard to know for sure. Um, 
Yes, perfect. Okay, so, and this should always be the same address anyway. Uh, let's... Okay, anytime this memory address is read or written to, we're gonna go. So now if I hit run, we break again. That's this breakpoint. It has to be the... Wait, does it? Are we still in... Yeah, no, we're in mem copy. Okay, what's our frame? Mem copy. Okay. It, it is part of the TGA structure. So... TGA file header. So that must be part of the... Oh, it's part of the... Is it part of the footer? Um... It's fine. I'll accept the risk. Okay, so... Mem characters and ID, uh, color mapped, not color mapped images. Um, or I guess the other thing we could do, the other thing we could do, uh, workspace, PlayStation. I really need to rename this folder from 3D test. We are no longer testing 3D. Um, we have, we have gone well beyond the 3D test days. Uh, assets, and we're gonna go moon.tga. Well, actually, let's xxd moon.tga. Uh, yeah, okay, so it's the end. This is what we saw in memory. So the end of this file. So let me draw a picture, okay? Let me draw a picture. Um, this is memory. This is our pad, let's, let's say this is our pad stuff in memory, and it looks like this is our TGA image, right? It's overlapping. So here, we've got a problem, and it just so happens that this address um, is actually a pointer to another part of memory. <laughs> and so now, when this gets overridden, it ends up pointing here, which is nowhere, which is a problem, okay? I think that's a good uh, visual description of the problem. So, to fix this, we've got to fix this. TGA. So why does this overlap? Why does this overlap? Load TGA. Where do we get this buffer from? First off, the temp buffer. It must be the temp buffer. Because these static buffers are allocated differently to- yep, that's it. Do you remember, like, 20 minutes ago when I said the temp buffer was going to be a problem? Um, well, I was right. This memory, because of the static allocations being different, overlaps with what malloc and malign use. Um, I probably read more data than I expect to, but I don't, right? This buffer is 100% big enough. This is a 256 by... Wait. Wait. You might be right. Because what's getting read into memory here is the footer of the TGA, right? So if we look at it, it's the stuff at the end. But this is probably after the image data. So why not factoring in the size of the footer? Because there is a thing about this in the spec. If I can find a good spec... Um, The wiki article on this is actually really good. The Wikipedia article. Um, TGA. <laughs> bunch of things, apparently. True Vision Targa. Um, okay, so. Extension area. See? Extension area. This is... Um, this is what I haven't factored in. This has... But I would have thought... So the header comes out, right? It's got stuff about how big we are. And then we read... We only read this many bytes. So it shouldn't overrun. And we also shouldn't see this at all. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, the problem is that we're reading more than we expect. So even if we allocate this properly, it'll still go wrong. Um... So, slightly, slightly different. I should put the word overrun here somewhere, but I don't have enough uh, pixels. So. 
why is this the wrong number of bytes? Right? Because we print this out correctly. This we've got this log message here, right? And this is this is absolutely fine. Um loading moon, image data, this is the the right number of bytes. This is what we expect. We did this before, right? Python uh divided by four, divided by two five six. It's two five six by two five six by four. Um Echo Chamber Show, welcome. Another lovely first time viewer stopping by. Thank you so much. Um, so many, so many first time viewers swinging by. I'm guessing a number of them are coming from YouTube, uh, or just, just thinking this looks cool, uh, you know, Discovery and Twitch. But everyone knows that, uh, Discovery and Twitch isn't real. Doesn't really happen. Um, <laughs> no, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, so, we're reading the correct number of bytes, yet somehow... Oh, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. F read, okay? Uh, let me... I don't have a man for it. Yep. He's onto it. Can we, can we show the F read? Um, oh, it typed web development to Twitch and it came up. Nice, nice, beautiful. A little bit different from web dev, but um, yeah, awesome. Oh wow, DK Cass found my video on YouTube when it only had 10 views. It now has 100,000 views. It's insane. Uh, yeah, so, so, my problem is, I've double dipped, okay? Um, I'm F-reading into a buffer, right? I'm saying I'm reading uh, units of however many bits per pixel times the width times the height times the bits per pixel. This is two bits per pixel, so I need to either say I'm reading one byte in this many one bytes, or say I'm reading this many uh, bytes per pixel, sorry, bytes per pixel, and I didn't mean to scroll there. Um, or I keep that there and do this. These things are multiplied together, right? So I'm gonna keep it as this because it's more in line with this line up here where I do the actual calculation. I think this is a little bit tidier in a sense, not optimal, um, nothing ever is but we will survive. Let me just see if I can find where I put chat. There it is. Beautiful. Yep, times BPP. So I, I am, I am, yeah, multiplying too much. So I'm gonna go with this. Okay, we're gonna jump back to the uh, the canonical window. And now when I run, we're not gonna see a 2B miss. Oh, that's so good, that's so good. Okay, so let's go back to main. Let's get rid of this default log. Um, let's go log level info. And then also go back into texture.lua, change this log level down, and also get rid of that print. Okay, so, in conclusion, uh, in conclusion, the only thing we actually care about here is this one line change and the precondition. So we're going to keep the changes to source.tga. We're going to bin everything else. We're going to bin everything else. Except maybe this. Um, we, also, we also need a branch for this. So let's say... Uh, we're in main, right? No, we're not. Okay. Cool, and I think that was fine. Uh, so if we go to source TGA, well, actually, let's just make uh, Docker Elf. Nice, beautiful. Um, okay, we'll come back to why this isn't quite as crispy and pixely as I want it in a second, but for now, that's looking great. So let's git add source TGA. And then this was also uh, change default log level. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I'm, I forgot to make a branch. What are we going to call it? Uh, TG, 
TGA load mem error. Beautiful. All right, so we've got this. Uh, we'll get a nice pull request out of this. It's a pretty small one. Fix TGA loader buffer overrun. It doesn't really need a description. It speaks for itself. It's two lines. Beautiful. Uh, you think this is nice and exciting? That's awesome. And you might come back to your master system emulator using it to learn Rust. Nice. It would be cool to see, uh, you know, like Rust in theory should completely stop this class of, of error, right? It should be able to look at it and... S oh, actually, no, this is just like a user logic error. I don't know. But like, in theory, you're going to have, have like more information. You're going to have better APIs than just read bytes into a dumb pointer buffer, right? Um... I would love to play around more with Rust. I wish Rust was practical to port to the PlayStation 2. Um, I think if there is going to be an LLVM port to the PlayStation 2, it shouldn't be the Rust fork. It should be like the general fork because there would be more info to, for, for less work from that. But uh, yeah. All right, well, let's just merge this in because that's a really, really important bug fix. I can also put a bug label on it and get rid of that branch. Perfect. So let's... Okay, so what else have I accumulated here? These changes aren't important. We're going to keep texture as is for now because we're going to keep working in this, but the others we can uh, check out. So, Okay. Make... Try that one. Nice. So, this was a pretty long-winded way <laughs> to get back here, but that's fine. Um, we've done it. We've done part one. This is solved. Now let's think about pixel perfect sprites. And this hopefully won't take too long. There's a wonderful article someone already wrote about this. I don't know who JBit is, but uh, you're doing you're doing good work. I don't know. This guy's still around. What's this guy doing on uh, on GitHub these days? He's doing a few things. He's doing a few things. Okay. So, this is a starting sprite. This is what it looks like when he draws it. Um, that's not great, right? For one thing, there are there are some pixels missing. It's complicated, right? This is this is to do with 3D stuff. But basically, he says that if you use this half pixel offset in your UVs, so like plus 0.5 at the top left corner and plus 1.5 at the bottom right corner, as well as uh, oh no, yeah, no, just just that change. Your X and Y stays the same, right? then you're going to get a crispy image. And then there's some extra stuff as well, but let's just do this for now, right? This should be a good start. This should be a good start. So, uh, because if you look at this, right, I don't know if other people can tell. Make run, make run. This just looks a little bit soft. There's something not quite crispy pixely about it, right? I think. And it could just be, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure, but I want to try, uh, I, I want to see if there's a noticeable difference if I do this. So we're going to, we'll do it in our C renderer, I think that'll be easier. One complication is that we're actually using uh, ST rather than UVs, even though I call them U and V. Um, and the PlayStation 2 has a, a difference here, so let's pull up the hardware manuals. Uh, let's see if I can find the section. Alright, so we've got the hardware manual. Again, I probably shouldn't be showing this, but YOLO. We'll be fine. Um, just a drawing, drawing process, maybe. Local memory, this is fine. Frame buffer, this is fine. Texture, that's okay. We'll read the clot stuff probably another day at this point. Uh, types of GS primitives, drawing, drawing attributes, maybe. Okay, yeah, no, so that's... Yeah, 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 yep. Um, outline of the drawing process. Yes. I think this is what we want to see. Maybe. No, this is just how... How the triangles are built. Uh, draw environment. 
this looks at, yeah, texture mapping flow. Here we go. So, so there's a relationship between ST and, and UV, right? Um, as long as you know, as long as you know the width and the height. So, view size, V size. And these are in texels. Um, features. So, show the whole texture. So maybe using U and V is better if we're doing crispy pixel drawing. But then we have to... Mm, there, there are problems with it. There are problems with it. Um, for one thing, I like the idea of doing it all like in, in one go. Um, or all the same way. Okay, so here we go. So U is U size times S over Q, right? And these are divided by Q. So we'll assume Q is 1, because we're resetting Q to 1 so far. So U is U size times S. So S is U divided by U size. Okay. So for now, let's do it like this, right? So... Um, so... For one, let, let's just ignore our UV uh, coordinates. Let's say UV... Well, actually, no, hold on. What am I doing? What am I doing? I don't even need to do this in the C, in the C layer, right? I can just do this here. And let's do this here. So let's say... Um, okay. U divided by U size. U divided by U size. So I want 0 0.5 divided by the width, which is 256 and 0 0.5 divided by 2.6, which is the height. And then, 256.5 divided by 256. 256.5 divided by 256. So in theory, this should be crispier, right? Um, is there any difference? It looks a little brighter, maybe? I'm gonna need a button. I'm gonna need a button. Uh, local... Okay, so we're going to go back. Zero, zero, one, one. If pad... Uh, pad dot hold pad... Let's go pad dot x, I guess. Um, pad dot held pad dot x, then tt equals not tt, of pad dot, sure. Let's do this, and it's gonna, um, it's gonna flicker, or not. We, uh, we have a Lua error. And expected to close, func close function at line 43. Perfect. Missed. Uh, missed an end. Unfortunately, that does just, like, hard crash our emulator. Okay. Doesn't look any different. Does not look any different. Because that's... I mean, if it's not perceptible to me, it must not be uh, visible to anyone on stream, right? Parameters of float. Oh, yeah, hold on. I am stretching. I am. Because like, this is an 800 by 600 window. Good for... Uh, Lefsler, you are, you are saving my life tonight. <laughs> so let's go, I think it's in general settings, right? Uh, GS window. 640 by 448. There we go. Um, let me also then... This could also just be, like, pulsing so far. So print... Ooh. Yeah. Look at TT. TT equals... Is that how you do it? Bitwise operation on bull... Oh, bull... Can we do this in Lua? How do we stringify? Hold on. 
do a stringify bow. Um, there is a, is there a stringify if type is number then the other dump dump recursive to string to string apparently a real function to string sure ah yes it away is okay let's debounce it a little that's gonna be better um If padder and db greater than, less than or equal to zero, then db equals, uh, how, how many, let's wait a second in theory, db minus equals 30. And we have a Lua syntax error again, because you can't do this minus equals stuff, right? That would be too much syntax for Lua. Um, why does, oh, minus equals one. <laughs> there we go. Okay. They still look the same. It would be really interesting to test this on real hardware as well. Um, either way, in theory... There is a difference between these things. Maybe this isn't the right size image. Maybe there's something else weird going on. Um, wasn't really worth worth doing. So maybe for now we'll mark this as done and say future future investigation needed. Um, okay, and I think that might be all I get done today. Uh, I'm trying to keep these closer to an hour, just for my sake. Um, kind of a weird, like, essentially, the bulk of what we got done today was this one-line fix, but it was an important one-line fix. It wasn't obvious, had to delve into the debugger. Um, I spent a bit of time, you know, quite a bit of time yesterday, tidying up small things. Uh, again, for anyone who missed it, let me quickly show off the new engine actually running. Uh, so if I go into Dungeon Crawl... So this is it, we're drawing like 20 by 20 tiles here. They're ugly tiles, but they work. And we hit a solid 30 FPS. So this, and this is, you know, like our fast renderer, right? This was impossible with the slow lure one before. Uh, oh nice, you can stream on real hardware if you get the elf. Yeah, um, come to my Discord. Uh, let me, do I still have it on my clipboard? I don't. Let me just like grab another link to my Discord real quick. I, I post stuff like that to my Discord. Um, it, you can also, I think, I, I haven't hardware verified the latest build yet, so I haven't hard, hardware verified this yet. Um, but I'll do that probably just shortly after the stream. Unfortunately, I don't have a good setup to do it. Um, but if I come into actions, maybe for the last build, I can't remember if I turned this on or not. I did. You can download it from GitHub. Um, no guarantee that it'll work well, though. I did change the... Um, the way scripts get loaded, the way paths work, so it should support loading, but we'll see, we'll see. I, I had to do a bunch of stuff. Um, Banchobu, thank you very much for the follow as well. I had to change a bunch of stuff because I was using PS2 Link, but I wanted it to support PCSX2 and USB as well, and those things will handle paths in a slightly different way, which is fun. Um, also for people who haven't seen it, that game runs, uh, in Love 2D as well. I've got a Love 2D wrapper around my PS2 code, which uh, is almost entirely compatible. It's pretty cool. Uh, it looks a bit weird. I don't know why the blending is a little bit odd, but yeah, we can play that game on a PS2 and in Love 2D. So uh, we're making progress, okay? I think next time we're going to rethink this TGA abstraction a little bit more. We're going to do something a little bit better, or maybe I'll do it off camera if I decide it'll kind of be boring. And then uh, it's going to be index textures, moving into this CLUT, more hardware manual parsing, okay, there's some really cool stuff in the hardware manual about it, um, starting like here, talks about how all these like 
formats work in memory and stuff. I mean, look at this. Look at this. What does this mean? How do we do it? Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, for everyone enjoying the show and following along on YouTube, thank you very much as well, especially if you make it to the end of these videos. And thank you so much to the wonderful people in chat helping me out and making this journey so much more enjoyable. Uh, this has been really good fun. I'll be back very shortly, maybe even tomorrow. I'm on kind of a roll at the moment and I'm on leave from work, so we'll see how much we can get done while uh, that's happening. I'm Tom, thank you very much for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.